hello guys welcome back to my channel today we have another reaction video this one's called 10 creepy towns like 10 creepy town names you don't want to live in so i don't know if this is only in the us or is it about worldwide but we'll know soon so before we start the video don't forget to leave a like if you enjoyed the video comment on our channel see next and subscribe to the channel for more content let's get into it What is going on, everyone? Welcome back to the world according to Briggs. Do you live near a town that has a really bad name, like, let's say, Paint Lick, Kentucky, Flea Town, Ohio, or Cheese Quake, New Jersey? Side note, that one is real, and it's also what we call it when my cousin's ex-wife hears we have cheesecake at a family gathering. <laughs> There are a ton of strange names for towns and villages in this country. Some of them, like Intercourse, Pennsylvania, make you scratch your head and what the hell were they thinking? There's some sick people in this world and sometimes we let them name our towns. I'm sure some town elders regret greenlighting the local hermit as the one to pick the town name in Blue Balls, Pennsylvania. It's actually Blue Ball, not S, but most people call it Blue Balls, Pennsylvania. Today, I thought we would look at some more strange named locations, but with a creepy twist. We have a bunch of places with somewhat scary or morbid names in this country. We won't be focusing on the ones that everybody knows about, like Hell, Michigan, or Tombstone, Arizona. Everyone knows about those ones. We're going to venture into the American backcountry and find some really weird locations that have some really sick names. I guess we're going to start with... Number 10, Satan's Kingdom, Massachusetts. Satan's Kingdom is an unincorporated village in the town of Northfield, Massachusetts. Satan's Kingdom is about a mile and a half northwest of the town near the Vermont border. It was... Is it Satanistville? Do they only have Satanists living in there? Who on earth would name their city Satan? Satan's kingdom. Who? It's named Satan's kingdom because when settlers came to the area, there were Native American villagers there who decided that they weren't too keen on giving up their land, and they defended it. Pretty strongly, I guess. The settlement was attacked numerous times, losing more than a few settlers. It was also known for its rough terrain and wildlife, and settlers found it kind of hard to settle the land when they were worried about being attacked by the locals and bears and, you know, tearing an ACL on the rough terrain, I guess. Surprisingly, they have a town in Connecticut and one in Vermont with the same name. Can't believe two places thought that was a good idea. Much less... Hold on. So the names go back to the times when the Europeans are coming to the Americas. That's a long time ago. Three. Number nine, Skull Valley, Arizona. When settlers first surveyed the land in the area, they discovered human remains, inspiring the name Skull Valley. They weren't done finding human remains. Though the place has since been cleared of visible bones, the name is stuck. I hope they are done finding remains. I bet they get a little nervous whenever one of the locals hasn't been seen for a while. The locals are all the general store talking and some brings up, haven't seen old man Keebler in a couple weeks. Then they start talking about, well, should we give him a few more weeks or start looking for a skull? Number 8. Sleepy Hollow, New York. Sleepy Hollow is a village in the town of Mount Pleasant, New York. The village is located on the east bank of the Hudson River, about 30 miles north of New York City. Sleepy Hollow is the setting for Washington Irving's... So, what is a Sleepy Hollow? Of course, I don't know what that means short story, The Legend of Sleepy Hollow, it was written in 1820. Washington Irving was basically the Steven Spielberg of his day. If you don't know about him and you've never heard of the book, you might have heard of the main characters, Ichabod Crane and the Headless Horseman. If that still doesn't ring a bell, might I suggest learning how to read or downloading Tim Burton's Sleepy Hollow, starring Johnny Depp. Good movie. Watch that. Christopher Walken played the Headless Horseman. The movie's nuts. Anyway, while the name itself isn't as scary, the stories of a headless dude cruising the woods on horseback makes it extra creepy. Yes. Number seven, Devil's Den, Wyoming. Devil's Den isn't much more than a general store, a campground, and a few hermits dodging lawyers, I imagine. If the word devil doesn't invoke a negative feeling... America, man. Who's going to move in a city that is called Satan or Devil's Den? Like Satan's Kingdom or Devil's Den. People are just crazy. Congratulations. You didn't go to a Catholic school and have a nun tell you the devil would set you ablaze for having premarital sex. Devil's Den sits near the Yellowstone River in Wyoming. It's perfect place for backpackers and other types of outdoor folk, I imagine. People like to look at waterfalls as a big thing there. The place is also known as Devil's Hoof, which isn't much better. It's named for a 150-foot waterfall on Tower Creek in Park County. This, this is like this big canyon thing that people drive down to go see this waterfall all the time. It's like 10 miles of straight up cliffs it's almost. Though. It's been years since I've been there, but those cliffs seem pretty steep. Anyway, Wyoming goes all in. I like this. You don't see like nature, like I'm in Memphis and I haven't traveled a lot. I did. I mean, I didn't travel in the US because I'll be what? I was in New York for a few hours. Then 
came to Memphis and since then I've been to Texas once and I think that's it and maybe the the, the cities we pass by before getting to Texas because we are driving but like you don't see this in the US I, I don't I don't see the, no, no, let me not say in the US because this is in the US but I don't see that it's like nature you don't see nature you barely see nature this is beautiful imagine like going there and on naming things devil devil's playground devil's gap devil's gate and the most famous of all devil's tower right here Number six, Dead Woman's Crossing, Oklahoma. <laughs> this one sounds great. Dead Woman's Crossing. It's a small unincorporated community on Deer Creek near Weatherford, Oklahoma. The community takes its name from an unsolved murder of a local woman. Supposedly, it's haunted, and it got its moniker from a brutal July 1905 murder of school teacher Katie DeWitt James, who went missing with her child. They found the child alive, covered in blood, and they found Katie DeWitt James on August 31st, 1905. James' remains were found near Deer Creek, about 20 miles from Clinton, Oklahoma. She was headless. She had just filed for divorce, but I guess her husband had a solid alibi because no one is ever charged. This crime is unsolved to this day. Now, the child was okay and was raised by the father who, you know, I mean, most cop shows will tell you he's the number one suspect, but he got the kid since he was never charged and that's that. Now you got a place called Dead Woman's Crossing, Oklahoma. They need to change that. Number five, Nabone, Indiana. Nabone is an unincorporated community in Brown County, Indiana. Now, this one. What does no mean? I know what is a bone, but I don't know what is no. Has some people. They think they got skipped in the 2010 census, but back in the 2000 census, they had 200 people. And since then, they, they've looked around and they think everyone's still there. Anyway, there are a few theories floating around about how this Indiana town got its horrible name. The most popular ones suggest that Narbonne comes from its original French settlement that was here called Narbonne. Sort of like how here in Aloha, Oregon, it's spelt like Aloha, but... You know, the, the rural folks here, when it was rural, uh, didn't know how to pronounce it, so they saw it on paper and called it Aloha. So, yeah, Narbon, not a bone. I get it. Another theory is it came from the lyrics of a Depression-era song. And the lyric was, They ain't nothing here. How does people staying alive without any more than a bone to gnaw? Now, I didn't write those lyrics. I just read them for you. The phrase bone to gnaw quickly became a popular expression of poverty in the rural communities of the Great Depression. Eventually, the phrase a gnaw to bone was used to describe any impoverished area. And it kind of it kind of stuck. And so much so that they named a town after it, maybe. Number four, Transylvania, Louisiana. Transylvania is an unincorporated community in East Carroll Parish, Louisiana. This is not the famous Transylvania, the one in Romania. I got a question. What is weird in naming a city Transylvania? What what does it mean? Because I don't see anything weird. You know, where the legendary Dracula Man Cave Castle is, that's the famous one. As of the 2000 census, the population of Transylvania, Louisiana, was 743 people. This is another one that got skipped in the 2010 census. Unless a bunch of them turned into vampires and moved to places where they don't need sunscreen, they still have roughly 700 people living there. This vampire-friendly town was named in the 19th century by a Transylvania University alumni, Dr. W.L. Richards. Yeah, I don't know why he went to school in Transylvania, but he did. And he came back and brought the name with it. Obviously, the locals didn't know what was going on because they let this go. Obviously, this is not the real Transylvania, like I stated before, but that doesn't stop the local stores from selling vampire and Dracula related stuff. A buck's a buck, right? I oh, those Trans Transylvania has something to do with Dracula and the vampire stories. We actually make some vampire sunscreen. I was talking about sunscreen before. You know, make it like the extra thick type so they don't worry about burning. That'd be great. Make a mint. Make the tube it comes in black and when it comes out it's red. That'd be great. Number three. Frankenstein, Missouri. Frankenstein is an unincorporated community in northwestern Osage County, Missouri. This was a farming town when it was settled over 150 years ago. Today, the parish is composed of about 150 families, most of them making their livelihood not in farming, something else. They have a couple churches and a handful of houses near town. The rest are out in the fields and stuff like that, the farms. One of the local churches, Our Lady of Help, that's what it's called, is the amazing church. It's beautiful. The masonry, it's just, it's a wonderful looking building. 
building. They actually hold a picnic that's been an annual event in town for over 125 years. Nice little community. Weird name. Now about the real Frankenstein. Most people think the monster was named Frankenstein. That is actually the name of the crazy doctor that brought a dead dude back to life. Actually, several dead dudes. The monster is its real name, and it was sort of made out of spare parts they picked up places. Sort of like a 1967 VW Beetle. The community most likely derives its name from Gottfried Franken, a pioneer from the area. Number two, Devil's Lake, North Dakota. About 50 miles from the Canadian border, you'll find Devil's Lake, both the body of water and the town with the same name. Now, I went through here on train just last year. It was early in the morning when we got there, and I felt the train stop, so I pulled back the curtain and looked to see where we were, and about 30 seconds of viewing Devil's Lake, I felt I'd seen enough, and I went back to sleep. Not a lot goes on there, it doesn't look like. The name of this lake and town are due to a language barrier. The Dakota tribe Indians who lived in the area referred to it as Spirit Lake, but that was misinterpreted by early English-speaking settlers as Bad Spirit Lake, which eventually evolved into Devil's Lake. You can't drink the water in Devil's Lake because the water has too high a salinity, meaning too much salt and sulfur and all kinds of stuff. It's not good for drinking unless treated properly. I mean, take it out for a date, maybe get a nice bottle of wine. Treat it like that. Anyway, today the area is known as one of the best perch fishing places in the country. I guess the perch don't mind drinking the water. And then if you eat the perch, aren't you getting that? It just seems weird. You know, it's got all that sulfur in the water and I think that would be in the fish too. Anyway, moving on. Don't forget to stay till the end of the video where I will have another pole. It'll pop up in the right corner. You'll see it. it looks like a little circle with an eye. I'll have an arrow pointing to it. You'll get it. And number one. Kill Devil Hills, North Carolina. Okay. Kill Devil Hills is a town in Dare County, North Carolina. The population was 6,683 in the 2010 census. That's up from 5,897 in 2000. Hey, congratulations. You're big enough to have gotten a visit from the census people in 2010. Not a lot of people get that. Kill Devil Hill is the most populous settlement in both Dare County and the Outer Banks of North Carolina. The name apparently comes from a shipwreck. There was a ship carrying a bunch of nasty rum that crashed in this area. The rum was so foul, it was dubbed Kill Devil. And I guess mm. there's some hills there. Kill Devil Hills. Anyway, Kill Devil Hills is also the site where the Wright brothers had their first controlled airplane flight in the early 1900s. Interesting. All right, so that's my video. Don't forget the poll right up here. There's the little arrow. That will show you where the, you know, future this. Okay, that was it. I found it creepy and honestly, I don't understand why people name their cities Satan, Satan's kingdom or devil's den or anything that has to do with Satan and the devil. Why do you name your cities that? doesn't make any sense to me. Imagine somebody asking you, where do you live? Oh, I live in Satan's kingdom. What? But America, but are those even Christians, people who do that, who live in there? Do they even believe in God or in the devil or they just name the city and that's it. Okay, guys, that is it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. Please don't forget to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. For now. Leave a like if you enjoyed the video. Comment on the channel to next, and subscribe to the channel for more content. Let's get into 500. We are already three something. Let's get into 500. All right, guys. Until next time. Peace out.